Right guys, Mark Crossfield here, TaylorMade R15 430. This is the smaller head, so you've got a 460 and a 430. Let's take a look if anything different is in the 430. We've got GC2 HMT and we've also got some Titleist Pro V1X balls. My gaming ball on the floor, we're gonna give you some real ball data on R15 TaylorMade 430. Let's get stuck in. Right guys, they made R15 430, so 430 referencing the CC, the head shape, it's a smaller head. There's a 460 version and a 430 version. Now in the 430 version, you're getting everything that you would get in the 460. You get the new sliding bar at the bottom here. So it helps move the CG even lower and more forward. Taylor made a send to try and reduce spin. Um, you get two sliding weights now. So I've got them set here in the middle for max power, I think they call this. You can move them both to the outside and that'll give you max stability. Uh, so helping the club when you hit off center shots, try not to twist so much. Um, or you could move them into fades and jaws. I mean, you could set them wherever you want. There's many settings along this rail. It's just the added bonus of getting that stability on the outside is what TaylorMade would say is the bonus with this one. You've still got the changeable neck. I've set this down to a lower loft to try and give me the best numbers I can get out of it. And the 430 head shape in theory should give me less spin is the idea. Um, now obviously when I put that down by the ball, it's got the same black face, white lid, looks spectacular. It does look very, very nice. And in the 430 head shape, um, I like it. I don't mind a smaller headed driver. I, can't, I mean, I'm not fussed between a big one and a small one. It kind of changes from day to day almost for me with the bigger one and the smaller heads. Um, I think lots of people will look at that and see in their mind lower spinning, gaming better players driver which people want to buy into because uh, it does look like a nice little shake down by the ball you get the tailor made one graphic really on the sole here a little bit uh, on the lid sorry a little bit at the back belly seat we get the tailor made lineup line with a line it's a very clean top line to this driver so let's give the 430 a few hits to see what it all feels like and then we'll look at some real ball data to see if it's doing anything um here we go let's give it a whack does look good down by the ball it makes a very similar sound to the 460 as I'd expect. It's a very similar feel, to be honest. That flight looks nice. Doesn't look dramatically different maybe to the 460, but how much going down to a 430 from a 460 head shape can change your data? Well, we'll look at. Uh, let's give it another hit. Hit that really nicely. That's a lovely flight as well. I mean, it's definitely one, uh, same, I mean, like I say, this or the 460 for me, it would be so hard to pick. I think I could almost use one on one day subject to how I'm feeling and the numbers and one on the other day. It barely looks, or, or feels, I should say, any difference. I just think the 460 for most golfers probably would offer that little bit more forgiveness, which is only a good thing. Um, but anyone struggling with high spins and you want to get the lowest spinning driver, this might be one to give it a go. Let's give it one more hit and then we'll look at the numbers. Obviously shafts, you can custom fit them as much as you want with all the companies now. That's an option to get whatever shaft you want in there, subject to your love of the golf shaft or not. Hit that really nice. It's quite a loudish sound. I mean, the 430, I think, is such a niche product. I think, I mean, we, it was surprised when we filmed with lots of the TaylorMade Tour Pros how many of them had this. Obviously, they're always going for that lower spinning model as a general rule. Let's take a look at some of the numbers with this club and see if it's actually doing what it needs to be doing. Right, guys, numbers time. TaylorMade uh, R15 430, so this is the smaller headed one. Um, I'm launching at 16.9, which is fine. I'm spinning at 2.3. So that's certainly not particularly lower than maybe my SLDR. One down at 1.7 and then a couple up at 2.6. So as I keep saying, guys, my strike is far outweighing what they can do with the clubs. And my performance is having a bigger effect than any of the shift in the product, which is interesting. Um, and it's flying out there at 2.60, maxing out at 2.64 dropping down to 255. I had the weights in the middle, so again, with the stability of this club with those weights on the outside, how much that is measurable by human, in my opinion, is kind of next to nothing, to be honest. That's a robot test that would need to show you those things. I know lots of you want to buy into the word stability, and that's fine, but uh, 
measurable stability is a different question. Um, so I'm not particularly spinning that any lower than any other club. Now I think there will be some golfers out there who will spin this one lower, subject to the sets of strikes they get and what have you. I think the club is performing well uh, for the day I, try, I was testing. 260 is probably out there and 264 is with the longest hits of any clubs I was testing on that day. Um, it's the, uh, it's the just, I, I would like to see that getting into the one nines consistently for me to really rave about that being as a low spinning club. Certainly when I put it down by the ball, it looks and feels like it would be a low spinning club. But as I keep saying guys, these clubs can only move your numbers by a certain amount and often it's very small increments. So actually where I'm striking it on the face now and delivering the club, it's having a far bigger effect than lots of the marketing around the club that you guys seem to want to often hold on to a lot. I always find that really interesting. I mean, my spin has almost changed by a thousand revs from the lowest to the highest there. A thousand revs. That's not the club, is it? That's my performance. So interesting numbers. Certainly not the lowest spinning club I've tried. I mean, the SLDR S, which I used before that. Um, it's still, I found that one lower spinning than this one when Taylor made is saying that shouldn't be the way, which is quite interesting, which I think is the main point here is that you go out and hit them and try them and, um, you know, see what numbers and what, how you feel it could work into your game and the, the visual ball flight you're getting, those kind of things, are they things you want to see on a golf course? Um, for me, the numbers are fine. The club is performing well, but maybe not as low spinning as you would want it. Uh, post comments down below guys, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, is that the R15 a club you're thinking of getting or not? Are you a 430 person to a 460? Love to hear the reasons why you would be one or the other. Thanks for watching and we'll speak to you soon. So if you like what's going on here, don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel. Also thumbs up the video, post comments. Love to hear what you guys got to say. Let's keep it social. The more we talk, the more we share, the easier this game will get for, uh, for everybody. So if you want to find me on Facebook here, you can find me on Facebook. If you want to tweet me, find me on Twitter here as well. Just follow the links all in the description. Come and join the show. Get active, get involved, get playing some better golf. Thanks for watching.